Today marks the return of everyone's favorite long-standing series on this channel, Collector's Diary 2015 Edition. Let's go! As you guys know, every single video game purchase I make, I write down in a big, beautiful spreadsheet. Today, we're gonna go through all of the purchases I made back in the year 2015. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, the exciting, the weird, and any good stories I have about any items I purchase. If you enjoy the content, make sure to hit the like button. And if you wanna see more of it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. As always, a huge thank you to every single patron that helps support the channel. And with all that said, let's get into it. So here we are, welcome to the spreadsheet. If you've never seen one of these videos before, this first column here is the price that I paid for the items. Also, all prices are in Canadian. I am located in Canada land. The second column represents anything that I would have sold from the bundle, or if I had an existing item, like say I upgraded, I would put the amount that I sold the undercopy for in this column as well. This third column is the amount of money I lost or gained on the transaction. And over here in the far column is everything that I kept from the transaction if I ended up keeping anything. So starting off 2015 strong with an NES CIB lot here, we've got standout titles like Mario's Time Machine, Legend of Zelda with the map, Tecmo Cup Soccer, Adventures of Lalo 3, Little Ninja Brothers, Adventure Island 3, and Cool World amongst others for $420 Canadian. Those are all either complete in box or box copies of those games. And you can see over here, I actually kept a lot of it for my personal collection did some reselling on it, and in the end, I spent $183 to keep all of these pieces in this column over here. So that there is your first example of how the spreadsheet works and what kind of bundle deals were available back in 2015. You can also see on the second purchase, like Legend of Zelda 2 CIB on NES was already 70 Canadian back in 2015. Already kind of expensive. These two right here are pretty insane. Back in 2015, I was reselling anything I could get my grubby little paws on. So maybe you remember when the Majora's Mask 3DS consoles came out, as well as the Majora's Mask 3DS Limited Edition with the little Skull Kid figurine. It's this one right here, if you guys remember. I still have the one that I got back in 2015 and graded myself. So as you can see, I was able to get two of the 3DS consoles and I made 320 bucks off those. And I was able to get 11 of the Limited Edition 3DS games. 11 of them, which is just insane. I don't even know how I was able to do that. And you can see like, even though I resold 11 of them, I did keep one. I still only made $700. So I would have been selling them at a margin of about 75, 80 bucks a piece after shipping. But back in 2015, I was still working as a janitor, working my way through school. So I mean, selling stuff for margins like that was 100% worth my time. I would have been 21 at the time, if you're wondering. Right here, Luigi's Mansion VGA 85 on GameCube, as well as Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon VGA 95 for 3DS. I paid $200 Canadian for both of those games together. Like I got both of them for 200 bucks. And you can see I did keep Luigi's Mansion VG85. I still have that behind me. And I sold the Dark Moon VG95 on 3DS for 90 Canadian dollars. That would have been like 75 US bucks. Obviously, I wish I would have held on to that. What what a waste of time even selling it. This one here is kind of funny. If you guys remember when Club Nintendo was closing back in 2015, I went out of my way to purchase the Club Nintendo codes so that I could redeem them so that I would be a platinum member because I wanted to get whatever the very last platinum member reward was. And if you guys remember, it ended up being that Zelda messenger bag. It was like a Majora's Mask messenger bag. It's pretty useless. I still have it. It went through the wash. It's in terrible condition. I was disappointed. Right underneath it here, we have one of the yellow Nintendo Control Deck test cartridges, if you guys know what these are. $265 I was able to purchase one for, and even at resell, it was still selling for less than $400. Coming down to the end of January there, you can see that thanks to doing all the reselling there on the 3DS console and games that made myself a nice little $819 profit. Good start to the year, good start to the year. Moving into February here. We'll start on this one right here. Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes on Nintendo GameCube VGA 90 condition. I purchased for $282 and then I resold it for $277, netting me a loss of $5. And this is just how it goes sometimes. If you guys know anything about reselling, sometimes you just have to get rid of an item, eat a little bit of a loss on it, but like you gotta get the money back. It's funny that, you know, I purchased a Twin Snakes VGA 90 and I end up taking a loss on it. 
Otherwise, in February, it's a bunch of small little upgrading and CIB NES purchases. At this time, I was still going for a full NES set. So you can see here, I bought another large NES bundle that had Athena, Five Screw, Legend of Zelda again, non rev A. Might have been a first print. Not sure if I knew how to identify a first print at the time. Nobunaga's Ambition 1 and 2 complete in box and Blaster Master for a total price of $303. And if you're curious, almost every single one of these purchases is coming directly from eBay. By 2015, I was barely doing any local searching because it just got so competitive. And with most of these NES bundles I was buying, I was keeping a lot more than I was selling. So you can see that cost me another 200 bucks, but I was able to keep Nobunaga's Ambition 1 and 2, as well as the Athena. I upgraded the Zelda. And those were my goals at the time. Like I wanted a full CIB NES set. I'm no longer chasing after that goal these days. I kind of talked to reasons as to why in my quitting the N64 video. So you can check out that one and it kind of mirrors why I quit the NES set as well. Although with the NES set, I never had stadium events out of the way anyway, so I was never really that close despite having over 600 games. And if we look at February here, you can see I spent about $1,200 total, brought in about 800 bucks, and overall spent $400 for the month. Moving into March, let's talk about everyone's favorite overpriced GameCube cables, the HD component cables. If you guys don't know, this is the way to make your GameCube run in full HD, I guess. I don't really know much about it. I don't know much about video stuff. What I do know is that these cables were still expensive back in 2015. You can see I picked them up for $125 and was able to resell them for $228. That's in 2015. These cables were still over 200 bucks. That's insane. I'll put up the price that they go for now. I can only assume it's over like 300 US these days. Right here, I bought a first print Mike Tyson. Very nice condition. And I remember I specifically overpaid for it at the time, paying $137 for a complete in box Tyson. That was honestly like tippy top of the market price. You can see I upgraded my copy of Mike Tyson's and I sold my under copy for $73. So I almost paid twice as much for this copy of Tyson as I was able to sell my other copy for. Even back in 2015, I had already clued in how important condition premiums were for some of these early print NES games. I was able to pick up the Killer Instinct Super Nintendo. If you guys are familiar with that one, I'll put a little picture on the screen here. $132 to get the CIB console. Still have that one in my collection today. Here's a copy of Chrono Trigger, CIB plus the maps, $293. And this is another Greg staple. Always be upgrading your stuff whenever you have an opportunity to. So you can see I purchased this Chrono Trigger for almost 300 bucks and all I did was upgrade both of the maps and I upgraded the registration card I had. I sold the copy I already owned. I almost broke even on it, which is a perfect transaction. The value of the upgrades are almost always going to be worth more than the price you pay for them. Majora's Mask, factory sealed N64 collector's edition, $244. I remember this one very well because I was hoping at the time that I would have been able to grade it. But when I got it in, it was probably like a VGA 80, maybe an 80 plus condition. So obviously I was disappointed and I just wanted to get rid of it, get back what money I could out of it. And you can see I lost $40. Absolutely nothing happened there. I bought it. It wasn't in good enough condition. I sold Sold it, I lost 40 bucks. Sometimes it just works out like that as well. And just at the very end of March here, it, it's super small text. There's a lot to go through, but I got a 3DO game lot here, and I did put little notes on the far side. 14 factory sealed games, 20 complete in box games and I paid 245 total. I remember this was an open auction on eBay that wasn't advertised very well. And yeah, even back then, this was an absolute steal of a price. I still do own most of these games too. I would say some of the names, but like none of these really mean anything unless you're deep in the 3DO library. Yeah, there's just not really anything there. Feel free to pause the video if you want and you can read what's written here if you know anything about 3DO. And we can see in March here, I spent a little bit more actually, $2,600 out, but I was able to bring in $2,200 which meant I only actually spent 360 bucks on the collection that month. Not bad at all, not bad at all. Moving into April, another massive, massive, massive month here because I was able to buy Seven's collection. And unfortunately in 2015, you can see here we jump from April and we go to October. I have a massive data loss on the spreadsheet in 2015. It's the only data loss I have over 10 years of doing this. So with Sven's collection here, what I do know is it was a massive NES collection probably 500 and some video games. Most of the collection was loose. He did have some box stuff as well.
well. He did have manuals as well, but for the most part, just think a massive collection of loose NES games. I am pretty sure I went into my student loan in order to afford this year, because you can see it was $5,800 Canadian. I spent, I think, two or three years reselling this stuff, and I was able to bring back $5,400 of it while still keeping somewhere around over 200 NES games. So yes, I got the games for free, right? Free. But keep in mind, that took me like two years of reselling. And I remember with this collection, every single night for maybe three months, I would spend time cleaning video games. So I put in a ton of time and effort in order to not pay money. These days I have more money than I do time. But back then I had a ton of time and I didn't have that much money. Everyone's going to have a different valuation of their time versus money. So you may look at that and think, oh, that's a waste of money. You should have just bought the games yourself. Or you might think, oh, that's a good use of time since so you didn't have to spend the money on the games. Let me know your thoughts on the time versus money down below there. Would you rather spend your time or just spend your money at this point in your life? And then a couple spots down here, I upgraded my Donkey Kong Jr. Math Complete in Box on NES. And it was a gloss sticker print, which is the first print to Donkey Kong Jr. Math. At the time, I didn't really understand gloss sticker, but I knew it was an earlier print. But there really wasn't a huge amount of price discrepancy between owning a sticker print versus a normal print. But what I did know is that it was in nice condition and I needed to upgrade my Donkey Kong Jr. Math while I still could because it was and still is far and away the rarest black box game. And you can see back in 2015, I paid $1,600 for a complete box Donkey Kong Jr. math. That's pretty freaking insane. I was able to sell my under copy, my worst copy for 913, and it still cost me almost 700 bucks just to upgrade. That's a $700 upgrade, you guys. Kind of insane, kind of insane. And obviously in April here, spent an absolute ton at almost $7,700, was able to bring back a pretty decent amount of it, but thanks to Don Kyung Jr. Math there, as well as the big collection purchase, I did end up spending over $1,000 on the collection that month. So let's just talk quick about why there's a huge gap here between April and October. Back then when I was recording this stuff, I was not working on Google Drive, I was not working working on the cloud. So I was doing my backups manually via email. I would just email myself my spreadsheet every four to six months, right? Whenever I remembered to do it. But that still doesn't explain then why the data is all missing. So 2015, I'm sitting in the very basement of the house gaming with my younger brothers. And we're sitting in the very basement and you can see up through the railing, the next floor of the house. It's a four level split. So we're in the very basement. You can see up to the living room floor. And that's where we have our computer sitting. And it's just always kind of sitting there. It's always idling. It's always in low power mode but it's always on, right? In case someone wants to use it. So as we're sitting there gaming, all of a sudden you can notice the smell of burning plastic filling the room. And it, it's unmistakable, right? You know when something is burning and when something is on fire, especially when the smell is coming from your house. So we're sitting there and we're just like, you guys smell that, right? What What is that? What, what would be on fire right now? What's burning? And so then we start frantically searching, right? Because something is on fire inside the house. And then one of us look up through the railings of the stairs and you can see the computer there. <laughs> and it's bright orange like a jack-o'-lantern just kind of lit up. So obviously panic ensues as we realize the computer is sitting there literally on fire and it, it just combusted. Our computer literally spontaneously combusted. So we were able to put the fire out. Thankfully, nothing actually happened. But what was on fire was actually the hard drive of the computer, so we lost everything. Nothing was recoverable off of the computer. Which then brings in a depressed Greg who did not want to spend hours of his time combing through old emails to piece together April through October. A couple of things that I do remember though and I do have in my head are that I got a Final Fight guy box and cartridge for about 200 and some US. I'll put up the picture. And I also got my complete in box Pokemon box for GameCube with the big box. I just said box a lot of times in a row there, but I paid about 230 US for that as well. Just to give you a gauge of prices there on a couple of rare games that I know you guys will recognize. But with all of that out of the way, we do come into October 2015. And we'll talk about this GameCube lot here. A bunch of complete and box GameCube games. We're talking F-Zero GX, Ribbit King, Top Angler, Custom Robo, Billy Hatcher, Rumble Arena 2, and Zoid's Battle Legends. A lot of really good GameCube games there. $215 for 
for the entire lot. And you can see, I didn't resell a damn thing. I kept every single one of those GameCube games. Very nice purchase there to help beef up the GameCube collection. Coming down, we have LEGO Racers, factory sealed for the N64, $25 to pick that up. There used to be cases available of LEGO Racers. These days, it kind of dried up, I think, though. Albeit, LEGO Racers still isn't that expensive of a game, factory sealed. A complete in-box Mario Party 2 would cost you about $69. You can see I resold my worst condition copy for $80 and upgraded my Mario Party 2. So even at full fair market value back in October 2015, Mario Party 2 complete in box was still about 80 Canadian, 65 US dollars. Still had some value to it. It's not like the game was free back in 2015. Cheaper, obviously, but you know, still sought after. Which you can see here coming to the end of October, I actually spent $511 on the collection there because I kept mostly everything that I purchased. <laughs> Sometimes it just works like that. You know, as much reselling as I do, I was always a collector first. I always wanted to try and keep absolutely as much as I could. Moving into November 2015, we'll start off with a childhood favorite in Destruction Derby 64, factory sealed, picked it up for $56 at the time. This is one here where I wish I would have just bought a graded copy or upgraded this one over the years. Destruction Derby 64 was never that common to find factory sealed, but no one really cared about it, right? It wasn't ever a popular game. I just have an affinity towards it because I grew up with the game. These days though, now it's one of the like uncommon rare sought after N64 games. It's like a six out of 10, if we want to talk in a rarity scale, somewhere in there. When I go through these, the biggest thing I notice is that it's not that games were super cheap back then. Complete in box games still had pretty good value. It's just that factory sealed games were relatively so much cheaper. Even compared to CIB, right? You could go up to factory sealed and it would cost you like two times the amount, maybe three times the amount of a complete in box version. That's the biggest thing I noticed when going through these. The gap between sealed and complete in box was very close back then. In November there, kind of a more expensive month at $1,300 and also kind of a more expensive month, $800 spent on the collection. And the last month, December 2015, let's see what I was getting up to here. It looks like the first thing I was able to do in December is get an absolute steal on a Bomberman 64 second attack box only. 13 bucks. I don't know if that would have been local or off of eBay. Someone probably posted it as the first box, but yeah, $13 for a Bomberman 64 second attack box. That was a steal even back then. This game was still expensive and still rare. And underneath it here, I do remember this one as well. I think it was a store who listed all these for sale on eBay. It was another one of those where it just wasn't listed that well and it didn't get the bidding action that it should have. And as you guys know, I was going for the complete in box N64 set at the time. So I bid pretty aggressively in order to win this. Obviously we're talking 57 complete in box N64 games, right? So $592 for them, 10 bucks a game. Obviously that's a steal of a price. And if you just read through here, like there are some decent titles, but a lot of it, a lot of the games are just NFL quarterback clubs, the WWF games, the NBA games. There is a ton of filler in here, but when you're doing the full set, if you can knock off a ton of filler in one go, that is awesome. It's it's an awesome feeling to not have to chase after every single filler title individually. This bundle purchase right here, I remember, got me really motivated and really made me believe I could actually do the full N64 set. One of the best N64 purchases I ever got. And you can see over here in the far column, just above my head, I did end up keeping 26 complete in box games 12 boxes and manuals and six upgrades out of this bundle. And that's really the only big purchase of December. You can see there only spent 760 bucks, spent 280 total after doing a ton of reselling on these complete in box N64 games. And that does bring us to the totals for 2015. Obviously there's a massive data loss there. So this number would probably be $6,000 higher, give or take. But regardless, spent about $16,000 brought back 13.5 thousand and in the year of 2015 i spent 2300 dollars on my personal collection pretty crazy stuff you guys some really good purchases and a ton of fun to look back on 2015 and see what i was adding to the collection at the time let me know in the comments below what your favorite purchase was and if you want to see more videos like this just let me know i'll see you guys in the next video